I'm sure I can speak for any and everyone when they say if they send a child to school on the school bus, they expect them to come home unharmed and safe. Well, unfortunately, that was not the case for 13-year-old Naziah Harris's family because she vanished after stepping off of a school bus in her hometown of Detroit. If you want to know more about this case, please continue watching. I am sure that the morning of January 9th started for Naziah Harris just like it did for so many other children her age. They get up, they probably eat breakfast at home, but if they don't, they get dressed and they head out the door to go to school. And that is exactly what 13-year-old Naziah Harris did that morning. And when she got off of the school bus that day, I'm pretty sure no one expected her to vanish into thin air. And unfortunately, that is just what happened. She disappeared into thin air. But like we know, children or people just don't simply disappear. There has to be some type of interference from another party, whether it be a stranger or someone they know, like friends or family or friends of the family. And unfortunately, Naziah Harris has been missing since January 9th with little to no evidence of where she might be or who might have taken her or if she you know just ran away but i don't think that that's what happened because like i said children don't just disappear or run away without reason or cause to do so now the family her cousin mostly has been looking for her or leads about where she might have gone or who might have taken her and some things that i've seen so far seem to be a little strange but also seem to be something that could lead to her disappearance um, there was this one video, but unfortunately I can't find it anymore, where they were searching on, I believe it was TikTok Live at the time, and the cousin was talking to one of the neighbors, and he had a couple of older cars that were in his yard, and when he opened one to search, there was... Um, like a red colored spot in the seat but he said that it was probably juice or it was either rust because there was all some of that same color of a spot in the floor of the car that was in it that had clearly been in his yard for a while so the cousin then asked if she could check the trunk just to do so and he said sure and then when she went back to ask him what that spot was he was like oh Oh, come on now that's not you know and he started to stutter just like that and then he said that's when he told her he said I don't know it could be juice because I have kids or it could be rust um, now I don't know much about cars other than you have to put gas in them for them to run if they are not an electric car like a Tesla or some other sort but I also know that you need the oil to be changed and things of that nature but if those things are not done the car can break down but neither one of those things should leave a red spot in any fabric of the car so I do believe that that was blood now whose blood was it I have no idea and um, I don't know if many people know this but in order to test if there is blood in a certain spot on fabric you can actually pour peroxide on it and it, if it'll start to foam that means that there is blood there and not rust or juice as he so claimed and I do not know why her shoes also were an issue because there was a shoe that was found maybe about a mile or so from where she got off of the school bus 
and unfortunately it was only one shoe and so the police are wondering if there is a connection to that and if so what is the connection at this point because they haven't been able to find another shoe or any other evidence something like hair or torn clothing or something like that so we still are at the point where we have no evidence like the sweat in her shoes were tested for dna and the DNA came back to uh, confirm that the shoe did belong to her. But unfortunately, her clothes and none of her hair or anything of the sort to test for DNA were left at the scene. Only one of her shoes was left. So I think that it was a possibility that she could have been approached by someone and she was running from them in order to try to get away and she ran out of one of her shoes because sometimes that does happen depending on how tight your shoes are tied and maybe that happened to her and that's how one of her shoes were left behind and that's how they were able to get it to test it for DNA but something else that I find really weird in this case is also that her I believe it was one of her cousins that said that they called 911 to report that they found one of her shoes and they explained to the dispatcher that she's been missing for a minute and they said they were going to send someone out to pick up the shoe since it was evidence but they said they waited for over an hour and no one showed up to pick up the shoe and then somehow the shoe is found again and taken into police custody and tested for DNA and that's how we got the results that we have now that the shoe did belong or does belong to her but I'm wondering why if they called police and told the dispatcher what was going on why no one came out to collect the evidence while the family was at the scene and they could have also talked to the family as well to see if they had any more details and a friend of the family i think his name is mark or deandre mark he said that he has kids and this case disturbs him because he thinks about things like that because he says that you know a school bus is public transportation and what if he were to put one of his children on the school bus and they didn't come back home now i don't have any kids but i can understand where he's coming from because that is a fear of so many parents today what if we send our kids to school on the school bus and you know unfortunately something happens at school like what's been happening you know all over the nation you know in the past few years like a school um shooting and what if the kids get harmed in this situation or in Nazai's case what if you put your child on the bus and they get off the bus to come home and unfortunately they don't make it home just like she didn't which is so sad Now, the family friend, Mark DeAndre, said something that I found very interesting in one of his lives. When Fox 2 News asked him, how helpful has your Facebook Live been in keeping Naziah's name out there? He said, I believe it has been very instrumental in uncovering information from within the nucleus of the family. And he said specifically, those inside the house with Naziah it's uncovered a lot of information that needs to be known now i i don't know why he would say that it is important to ask questions or get information with inside her family because according to everyone else it seems like she just vanished after stepping off of the school bus to walk home which is about a quarter of a mile between her bus stop and her home so you would think that, you know, she would make a home okay since I'm pretty sure she's done this 
you know, many times before, like walked to the bus stop and got off at the bus stop and walked home like, you know, many other kids do. You know, it's no different than a lot of other kids. So I find that very interesting that he was saying that it is, you know, important to get information within the nucleus of the family because that would imply that maybe someone in the house that lives in the house with her knows something or they might have seen or heard something that they forgot to tell police or that they don't want to tell police because whoever's involved, it might make them look bad. And I hate to say this, but so many times in the in the African-American community, we have this thing where if something is happening within our family that is not such a great look for the family, we are told to keep it within the family or some people like to say what happens in this house stays in this house. And I do not believe that that's a good thing all of the time because especially in a case like this where a child is missing, you know, it could help bring her home to her family and friends because I'm pretty sure that they are all frustrated. But if one of them had something to do with her disappearance, which I don't know because it has not been confirmed or denied that that is the case, then whatever might be going on in the family should be spoken about just in case it could lead to her being found and who might have taken her because like i said in the beginning and like i've said so many other times and so many other cases kids don't just disappear but naziah is 13 years old and she's described as being five feet two inches tall and weighs 130 pounds and she was last seen wearing a light blue jean shirt, light blue jean pants, and a pink and white rug rats coat with a fur collar and blue and white Nike gym shorts. Now, I don't know um, why she would um, disappear unless, you know, it was not at her own will but hopefully she'll be found soon because the more you read into the story now they're saying that a 41 year old man who has been registered as a um, offender of children I'll just say that has been placed on the registry and they are not releasing his name at the time at this time because he hasn't been charged but they are zeroing in on him as a person of interest but they can't confirm or deny that he is a person of interest but his criminal record does go back um 20 years or so but in 2015 to 2016 he was charged with um touching a little girl a seven-year-old little girl so he could know something especially if they're zeroing in on him as a person of interest right now and i think that they might also need to look at that neighbor again if they haven't already the one who the cousin spoke with and she checked his car or his cars and he said that the spot in one of the cars in the seat was either juice or rust because you know when you have kids of course they do spill things like juice and food in your car but i don't think that someone would leave a stain like that in their car especially not a man because everyone knows how men are about their cars you know i in some cases i think that the cars get more attention than the wives and the girlfriends sometimes especially if they're fixated on um working on that car to potentially drive it again you know i don't think he would just leave a big juice spot in the back of his car um or a rust spot he would either change the upholstery to get it out or either just try to clean it and if he can't clean the juice spot up he would then change the upholstery to make it look brand new 
Um, but I some for some odd reason I can't say why because I really don't know how to explain it. But I don't think that was juice in that car, and they need to go back and talk to that man because I think he also knows something. Just like the 41 year old who has been placed on the offenders registry knows something or at least more than they are all are telling. And I think that it's really um, great that Nazai's cousin Roxy is um, searching for her and she said that she'll continue to search the neighborhood for her especially since you know they have those new leads about the man who is on the offenders registry and um you know the shoe containing her dna you know i think that is great that she's searching for her but one thing that i would really like to know why isn't her mother or her father or stepfather why aren't they searching for her because the only person that the only people excuse me that i've heard that are searching for her are the family friend and her cousin roxy and they are doing you know like facebook live streams and things of that nature and even tiktok lives because that's where i ran across one of the cousins lives one day but unfortunately, I can't find that anymore. So if I could have, I would have put it in this um, video here. But I can't find it for some odd reason. Maybe she took it down. I don't know. But there's also a lady who is um, psychic that the cousin has been speaking with. And she says that she keeps leading her to a house with a white shed behind it. But when she was on live, she couldn't find that house with the white shed behind it and then the psychic has also led her uh, to a church which is nearby uh, where they were searching that day on TikTok live but um, I hope that this young lady is found safe and she's okay and you know that it was simply um, you know just a situation where she was upset about something maybe and she ran away but either way, I hope that she's found and she's found safe and she's okay. Because we know how many times how, how these situations turn out not to be um, so great or have a great outcome. So I hope this is different and she's found and she's okay. Cousin, when her cousin Roxy was asked by Fox 2 News how it makes her feel that people are still chiming in, to uh, the lives that she's doing on Facebook and other platforms to um, learn about Nazaya's case, she said that it makes her feel great to know that people are still interested and it makes her feel like she has, you know, a lot of support, which is great because, you know, sometimes as time goes on, you know, people lose interest in the case or there's no information in the case. So people feel like, okay, we're at a standstill. So now we can move on to something else. And then there's another case that might pop up and, you know, people forget about the last case. And so I'm glad that hasn't happened in um, Nazaya's case. But again, she's 13 years old. She was last seen on January 9th getting off of her uh off of the school bus at her stop at the corner of Cornwall and 8 Mile in Detroit and she is described as being 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighs 130 pounds and she was last seen wearing a rugrats coat that was pink and white with fur around the collar and um blue and white gym shorts and i put up her pictures and her fl missing persons flyer here so you can see what she looks like and if anyone has any information about where she might be or who might have taken her or what might ha have happened to her they're asking that you call um the detroit police department at 313 five nine six two two six zero or crime stoppers at one eight hundred speak up 
Again, the number to the Detroit Police Department is 313-596-2260. And the number to the Crime Stoppers line is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. So if you know anything or think you might have seen anything, no matter how small you may think it is, like someone could have been driving in that area in a car that no one has ever seen before, or they could have just simply been walking and they've never been seen in that neighborhood before, call these numbers and tell police what you may know or what you may think you know because anything could help bring her home no matter how small it may seem at the time and i'm pretty sure her family would appreciate it and her friends would also so if you see something just please reach out to police and let them know what you may think you might have seen or what you might know and as police or people say all the time, if you see something, say something. And that is important in this case. Um, so, again, if you have any information, please call the Detroit Police Department at 313-596-2260 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP and let them know what you may know or if you even know someone that might know someone who knows someone that might get a little drunk or whatever and you know get loose lips and start talking let police know that too because it could help in the case you know you you never know what tip could help in this case because sometimes people think Oh, that's insignificant. That has nothing to do with it. But you never know. And yet again, I think that it's very, you know, strange that her parents are not out looking for her. And I understand that they might be, you know, distraught over this. So they had the cousin, you know, take over the search for them. But if that were me. I'd be somewhere on the floor and they'd have to pick me up until they find, you know, my child because children don't just disappear. But unfortunately, guys, that brings me to the end of today's video. If you like today's video, please don't forget to leave me a like. Don't forget to leave me a comment down in the comment section below. And let me know what you think about this video. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.